Hi, I'm Scott, and we're in upstate New York, just west of Rochester. This is the story of a complete boat building and boat owning novice constructing a 41 foot trawler yacht in our backyard. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. So we're doing basically the same thing here as that we did with the uh, the frames. You know, once we have the uh, squared off portion at the top all set um, and fits nicely, then we can make all our other marks, which are uh, based off all these setbacks. So, like I said, exactly how we did the frames, and the only difference for the transom here is that um, there's a top portion which we didn't deal with with the frame. So, you know, for the um, the curve of the roof, so we're gonna have to deal with that as well.
So we've gone ahead and we're just uh, marking the chine notch like we did on the regular frames. Um, it's going to be a lot easier obviously to cut it while it's flat on the ground than when it's up on the boat. We're still going to have to do some more chine notch cutting uh, when we put the, uh, the white oak planking on the back here. And then once we cut that notch out, when we after we're all said and done and the chine is actually in place, that will get a couple layers of plywood over um, the planking as well. So. And, you know, because I was confused a little bit about the designer's plan uh, for the transom and how it's installed, this is probably a little over-engineered again. Um, all the joints are uh, backed up and with pocket hole screws. Now, essentially, that was just to use for alignment purposes, but it does add some mechanical strength to it. And then we have the uh, oversized gussets, which are uh, glued and then screwed into place with some coated deck screws. Um, all the joints are also, uh, the end grain is we used our uh, total boat epoxy for uh, some strength there because that end grain glue joint is notoriously weak. So, you know, you got to use the best stuff there that you can. Um, and then once it's on the boat and we coat it with, uh, you know, it's, it's white oak planking followed by a couple layers of plywood, all said and done, every joint here will be backed up. We'll have about three and a half inches thick worth of material there. So, you know, pretty robust and hopefully we'll sleep well at night uh, when we're rocking in the middle of the ocean. So we got the uh, rabbit marked out. You know, we really double, triple checked our templates uh, off the CAD. Um, if there was any discrepancies between the two, you know, because over this span, the thickness of the glue joints, when you've got this many glue joints, you know, things can get off by an eighth or so. So anytime we had any discrepancies, we just split the difference. Uh, and it seems to my eyeball to be a nice, fair sweeping curve. Um, so this being the rabbet, now we need the bearding line. So the rabbet is where the finished hull planking will enter the keel. Uh, just like we, when we built all our frames, we did all our setbacks, taking into, when we we're building the frames, the, taking into account the thickness of the keel. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So when we set our frames on, we don't wanna set our frames right on the rabbet line, because then our planking would be down here. So we need to set it, um, uh, our, our, excuse me, our frames the thickness of the, the planking up. So just took a two by four since my finished um, hull planking is gonna be an inch and a half. Cut it to the flattest angle indicated in the plans because we can always steepen it up. Uh, cut it to the flattest angle that we'll use as a general guide for the bearding line. And then um, we can cut the rabbit out. But today I really want to dry fit the transom on that we completed up and just uh, see how it looks and make sure it lines up. So I'm just gonna mark a couple of bearding lines and then we can hopefully get to the transom.
put the same on that lower. Okay. I'm thinking about uh, taking my block and tackle, putting an eye bolt up to the center of the, the center of the ridge beam there, like way on the end here. Yeah. So it's past this end, and we'll just pull it up with the cool or with the block and tackle. Okay. Why don't you uh, go inside? Give me. Uh, I'll call you in like 20 minutes. All right. Because I got to drill some holes. Now that's pretty darn plumb just as it sits and this is just an all dry fit. It's uh, too cold to use any epoxy so we just mocked it up so we could see the fit and finish, check our angles, see if we're sitting on our lines and everything looks really really good. Um, the crane worked great, our block and tackle worked great. Um, we definitely could have used an extra pair of hands out here um, and when we go for the final fitting I'm going to get a couple more pairs of hands out here and it's not that these things are that heavy it's just that they're so big and awkward it would really help to have somebody else here to help. So. Uh, we appreciate everybody being here and checking out our project. We love hearing from you, so send us an email or leave a comment below. Go to our Facebook page, check out our Instagram page, or go over to our website at www.cdreamerproject.com. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.